One of the most important aspects of a forest and a forest canopy is the empty space between trees. These are what we call canopy gaps. Canopy gaps are actually a really good indicator of forest health. They tell us something about the processes that cause trees to die. Uh, and actually capturing mortality of trees is one of the single biggest uncertainties that we have about how forests are responding to the pressures of climate change. Intuitively, you might think that a canopy gap is a bad thing. It indicates a tree that has died. And that is absolutely true, but they're also actually critical to driving the dynamics of the system. Trees, when they die, they create these openings that allow light to filter down to the forest floor. And these seedlings that would have been sitting there waiting for decades, sometimes even centuries, finally get a chance to spring up and sort of make their way up into the canopy. Trees can die in a myriad of different ways. So you can have a storm pass through a system and it might knock down tens or even hundreds of trees in just a single go. And they can be sick, just like us, or they can suffer from the impacts of things like drought and, and heat waves. So we're seeing that increasingly frequently in places like, for instance, Europe. If we're thinking about how these ecosystems might respond as the climate around them warms, understanding the link between forest structure and climate is really crucial. Technologies that allow us to measure canopy gaps from the air, airborne laser scanning or, or LIDAR, mounted on a plane and is flown across a landscape. It builds a 3D model of what that canopy looks like in incredible detail. And using these data, we can actually reconstruct exactly where these canopy gaps are across big spatial scales. So tens, if not hundreds or thousands of kilometers squared. Traditionally, one of the limitations of airborne LiDAR has been that it's been acquired on a sort of a project-specific basis. We started uncovering data sets that have been collected in all different places and for all sorts of different reasons. And really what we've been doing over the last couple of years is convincing this community that there is value in bringing all these data sets together. So we've been working with partners really across all continents and getting them to trust us and share the data that is hard won and very expensive to acquire. Almost without fail, everyone I've approached has been extremely open about contributing their data, contributing their enthusiasm, and it's just sort of snowballed in a way that I probably didn't expect when I started. We now have access to over 2,500 locations across the world, giving us the first global pictures of what canopy gaps look like across the world's forests. Collaborations with WWF, for instance, spanning uh, the entire Congo Basin, collaborators in Brazil that have shared this amazing data set spanning the entire Brazilian Amazon for organizations such as NASA. Uh, and so we were able to reuse some of their data sets and apply them to completely new questions. And so this is one of the things I'm most excited about this project is this myriad of potentials that we can do with the data now that we've compiled it. You will have all seen in the news at the moment the ability of forests to sequester and store carbon. By being able to map their three-dimensional structure in really high detail, we are starting to get a much, much better picture of how carbon is stored and then moves through these ecosystems as trees grow and die. Forest canopies are, are actually home to much of the world's biodiversity, particularly when we go to places like the tropics. They are structurally very complex. Uh, and this creates a whole range of different habitats and niches where different organisms can make a living for themselves. And so by mapping and understanding this three-dimensional structure, we can start to better understand how different animals and different groups of species use these ecosystems and make a home in them. For me, the biggest success of this project by far has been our ability to bring together this community that previously was working uh, largely independently, not just to get them to share this data, but then also uh, put it together in a package that we can give back to the community uh, so that we can start to really tackle some of these big questions together uh, and not do this so much in isolation, because the truth is that we're not really gonna be able to, to tackle these big global challenges such as the climate crisis and the biodiversity crisis individually in our silos. We really need to be able to work together as a community. So I'm genuinely really excited to see how this collaborative effort comes together to help us tackle this crisis that we currently face.